hey loves and welcome back to my channel so we are going to learn how to make this draped overlap bustier today so the first thing that we are going to do is to draft the pattern because you cannot achieve that without a pattern so i'll cut the back part first so i'll go ahead and mark one and a half inch for the zipper allowance like i said i will cut the back bodies first before the front so i'll go ahead and mark 1.5 inch for our zip allowance if you want to make it two inches fine so i'll go ahead and draw a line and label it zipper allowance So now that we have our zipper allowance, we are going to measure our sho our shoulder. Our shoulder is seven and a half. That is fifteen divided by two plus half in that is eight. So from there, I will mark down my chest line. My chest line is eight inches. So I don't have to mark my bust point under bust. I'll only mark my half length and my allowance. The half length is 16 and the seam allowance is 2 inches. That's why I marked 18. So the neckline will be 3 and a half and the back depth, the depth of the back neck will be 2 inches. The wideness is 3.5. You can make it 4 if you want. Then the depth is 2 inches. It will be a high neck. So I will mark my dart. Remember, every measurement you are taking will start from the zipper allowance. So I'll connect the dart line to the chest line. And on each side of the dart, I'll subtract half an inch. And from there, I will connect, I will connect it to the dart line. But this time, it will stop at one inch below the chest line. If you notice, the dart did not touch the chest line. It stopped at one inch below the chest line. So my bust is 40 divided by 2, 10, divided by 4, 10 plus 2 inches, that is 12. So my waist is 28, that is 7, plus 1 inch for that allowance, 8, plus 2 inches for seam allowance, 10. So I'll connect the bust, bust line to the waist line and then to the allowance. So this is the guide that we are going to use for now. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. Then before that, remember to add your shoulder slant. So after that, I'll cut these bodies out. I'm sorry I might be rushing this pattern side, but I know that most of us know this already, but I want to touch it so that I can carry everyone along. So the back body, the back pattern is out now. This back pattern will serve as a guide. So this is a new pattern paper and I'll use this paper for the front. So I'll fold the paper into two. So I'll fold it into two. And after folding, I'll introduce the back bodies. Then before that, I will fold this zipper allowance because it will not be needed at the front. I only want the from the center to the side. I don't need the midpoint. So I will fold this zipper allowance and then I will place the pattern on this. Then I will shift it to touch the edge of this part of the pattern. You can see how I shifted it to the side so that I will have enough space at the center front. So I will mark three and a half for the neckline. I've indicated where the neckline stopped. Then the next thing that we are going to do is to extend the front by six inches. That is from the center back. You see where the center is? I will extend it by six inches. If you want, you can extend by eight. But with the way the, the picture that I'm copying looks, it did not reach eight inches. So I extended it by six inches only. Then I'll go ahead and cut. You can see the front pattern is six inches wider than the front. So I have marked where the neckline stopped. I'll also mark the center of this front. 
you can see where the folded part of the back is that is the center of the front so from the neckline i will make a curved line if you want you can make it a straight v but if you check the picture if you check the dress we are recreating the neckline is not a straight v neck it is a kind of curved a kind of sweetheart so i'll go ahead and cut it you know how we normally cut our overlap postier so this is it then i will notch my dart that is if you want to add a dart to this so if you want you can also curve down your neckline a little bit so this is how it looks like and i'll go ahead and label it right and left so i want to cut down this neckline for me it is still high i'm not satisfied with the curve i'll go ahead and curve it down more then i'll place it this way and curve So I'll go ahead and label this the right and the left so that you will not be confused. So you can see the midpoints where I notched. I notched midpoints. So two of them will meet at that notched area. You can see the notched area at the hemline. So I'll label this one the left and this one the right because of the way we are facing the your phone because of the way you are facing your phone right now so that you will not be confused so i have labeled the left and the right so remember after at this stage cut your lining as in cut your lining to have this shape now use this pattern right now and cut your lining then after cutting your lining keep your lining aside so i will start marking i'll start dividing this pattern paper you can see i started at the midpoint of the shoulder and then marked my first line you only mark one line at the shoulder do not mark more than one line at the shoulder the rest of the lines will fall at the armhole you can see where the second one that marking started from so i'll mark it down then I will continue dividing, I will continue marking extra lines. These lines that I'm marking now is for the slash and spread method. So I will slash this pattern paper, I will mark multiple lines, and those lines are where I will cut from. So you can see that i am done marking these lines then the next thing that we do is to start cutting them so before i cut i'll place the two pattern papers together so that whatever i cut on this line will reflect on the other one so i'll go ahead and slash these lines and if you are cutting you should reach almost the edge of each line you can see where that one stopped so making it reach that part will allow you to spread this pattern very well so i'll go ahead and slash all of them
so i am done slashing and this is what i have i have the right pattern and the left pattern i know it will be looking crazy right now but trust me we will get to what we need so this is the right side and the other one is the left side so you place it on your fabric then spread and cut i'll show you guys how to do that one but at this stage i will keep one paper aside one is enough to guide you the reason why i place them together is to show you how they will look after cutting them but if you want to cut on your fabric just place one paper place your fabric on fold then place one paper so that whatever you cut on the right side will reflect on the other side so we'll go ahead and introduce our pattern paper and then cut so sorry fabric so this is our fabric this is the doll face fabric that i'll be using if you are using a thick doll face you are good like the doll face that i'm using right now is very thick but if you are using the light one please make sure to add an interface to it. it's probably preferably a clothes gum so you add your clothes gum so that it will give um stability to make your fabric to be firm so that when you iron your pleats you get what you want so this fabric is folded into two so that when i cut i will have my right side and my left side on it so i'll go ahead and place this pattern paper on my fabric then after placing it i will go ahead and spread so one thing about spreading is the more you spread spread the more the more gathers you have i don't know if you get like if you spread this a little your gathers will not be too much but if you spread it very wide you will have more fabric and then and thereby having more gathers so i'll slash it very well so that it will reach it will reach almost the edge or the i don't know how to say it you can see how i slashed it to reach almost the end point of the armhole so i'll go ahead and spread it so this is the amount that i this is the size of spreading that i did so this is okay for me if you want to reduce it you can if you want to increase if you want to spread more than this you can as well do it so after doing that i will connect the lines i'll use a chalk and connect the lines then if you are connecting your line should be at least half an inch below the pattern you can see i did not connect exactly on the pattern i came down by like one inch or you can come down by two inches two inches is better because when i was sewing i realized that using two inches would have been better so i'll go ahead and cut on that line that i made then cut the neckline the shoulder the armhole and the side so after cutting this is the shape you will have right now so our pattern paper has done its job so i'll go ahead and use this to make our gathers so if i open it up this is what i'll have this is how the shape will look after slashing and spreading so the next thing that we do is to pleat so remember that i told you guys after i cut my overlap for the front i told you guys to use it to cut your lining so this is the lining this is the lining for the front the reason why i said you should cut your lining before spreading or before slashing is that this lining will guide you it will guide your pleats so this is the lining right now so what i'm going to do is that i will place that fabric on the lining you can see that the neckline aligned so i'll place the fabric on the lining and then pin i'll pin just the neckline i'll pick the neck i'll pin the neckline down and i'll also make the lining to and the fabric to align at the side part so you can see i'll pin it down here 
then i have my excess fabric at the center so after doing that you will start pleating you start making your pleats so you can see how the pleats are going i have enough fabric but if you want to have more have more than what i have you can spread your fabric of your pattern paper very well on the fabric before cutting so i'll go ahead and make my pleats so if you are pleating the pleats should a kind of overlap the previous one you can see all of them are lying on top of the previous one so you go ahead and make your pleats this way so if you are pleating please remember to pin down pin down all of them so arrange your pleats very well so after after pleating this is what i have the color of the fabric is black so you you cannot actually see the line of the pleats very well but i will iron it and show you guys so i am done pleating for the left side after doing that i will go ahead and pleat for the right side so after pleating use your pin to hold down the shoulder of the lining and the fabric together then hold down the armhole of the fabric and the lining together use your pin so after that you will turn the back and then trim off the excess you have at the down part so if you turn the front this is how it will look like remember we we'll still iron so this is all we have for the we have to do for the um, left side so after doing that i will go ahead and pleat for the left side so here is for the right side sorry so here is the lining for the right side i'll go ahead and repeat what i did at the right side at the left side so i'll pin the shoulder the armhole the neckline the side i'll pin those things down so after pinning them i can now start making my pleats So I am done making my pleats for the right side then I'll flip it over and then cut off the excess at the down part. I'll cut off the excess then if I turn it this is how it will look. So guys this is what we have for the right side and the left side is okay already so i'll go ahead and iron so i am done ironing and this is what we have i don't know if you can see the pleats very well but they are well they are well laid down so if you overlap if you please each um, one of them to overlap the other this is how it will look so at this stage the lining ha it has served as a guide for the pleat so make the pleats on the lining so after that remove the pins from the remove the pins holding the fabric and the lining together and use it to pin only the pleats of the fabric so by so doing the fabric will be separated from the lining
so after removing the pins this is how the fabric will look then you place your lining on top so at this stage you will turn the neckline and the side of the main fabric with the lining so remove the lining and then place it on the fabric then after doing that you go ahead and turn on your sewing machine so i have turned and i've also ironed and this is what it looks like i have removed the pins because right now i ran a stitch at the hemline so this is the final look of the pleats you can go ahead and arrange your pleats the way you want to so i hope this tutorial is helpful this is actually a subscriber's request so i tried my best in trying out the style and it actually worked for me so guys do not forget to subscribe and click on notification bell the notification bell is very important so that whenever i upload a new video you will be notified please please do not forget to subscribe and our online course is still ongoing registration is still ongoing if you are interested in the online course please click in the link below on the telegram link below so that you can join our was our, our, our telegram group so thank you guys for watching see you in my next video bye